Welcome everyone. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, obviously I'd like to welcome everyone to today's quantum webinar. Uh, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Dan Hicks. I'm the head of sales here at TRAMS. Uh, and for those who don't know TRAMS, uh, TRAMS are a 31 year old multi award winning IT reseller and solutions provider. Uh, we work within multiple verticals and multiple vendors. Obviously our, our reason we're here today is quantum and our relationship with quantum spans over. 10 years now, and, and for those eight of those years, we've been Quantum's partner of the year within the EMEA region. You know, as Dan mentioned, Quantum uh, and TRAMS have a very close relationship and we're constantly thinking about the technology and, and what our customers need to do. And I mean, even just a casual glance around, um, I mean, you know, it, it feels like there is just this, this constant intense pressure to create content. And, uh, and, and, you know, if you look at the numbers, it, it backs it up. I mean, no surprise this past year, we've all been meeting on Zoom instead of in person. Um, and, and video is just part of everybody's life. I mean, in every, in every aspect of your life and, and the companies you interact with, um, you know, the expectation now is, um, uh, is that it's going to be video first and, 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 and everything that entails that it's polished, that the messaging is consistent, that, um, that it's produced efficiently, um, you know, that it's updated uh, it, from a single place. So, so video is really our new normal, um, you know, for everything. And then of course, for, um, you know, for content over the top and streaming, it's just, it's, it's just runaway numbers. Um, but, but then we're looking ahead also uh, as, as we think about um, how content is, is going to be, continue to permeate the rest of the market. Uh, I mean, um, you know, if you tally the numbers, um, you know, hit games, games on the mobile, games everywhere, those actually eclipse Hollywood numbers. Um, um, and so, you know, you know, so, and everything is starting to get gamified. And, and what's the key to that? content again and then and then you know we've been hearing that ar and vr um is is the future for you know 10 years now but uh, but but big market pieces are moving into place and and this is a reality you can see i mean apple with their huge platform you know at this last developers conference last week um, are very plainly saying that every customer everyone that reaches out to customers this will be a big part of your strategy. And again, how are you going to manage that content? Uh, how is it going to be folded into an efficient workflow? Um, and, and frankly, as, as Dan mentioned, this is part of Quantum's technology and why we make it available um, um, uh, so that you can craft your workflow that's very efficient um, to, to create and manage and deliver that content. Um, and the, you know, I think everyone's familiar with what Quantum offers. It's the Stornex shared storage file system that, that branches across multiple types of, of storage that you can tailor to every part of your workflow. So, um, and the very newest entry is what we're going to mention today, which is Stornex 7, latest version of Stornex, on a converged storage platform for the first time, the H4000. So um, it, it, just to recap, I, I mean, um, it's, it's Storedext, the file system, the platform is a host of capabilities that, that creates a shared file system that can be mounted by multiple directly connecting clients and for whatever their part of that workflow is. So in a, in a creative workflow, um, it's, it's, it's probably massive video files that need to stream back and forth as it's being assembled. Um, it's probably lots and lots of very small files for a typical animation or, or, or VFX workflow. Um, and so it's multiple creatives needing to work at the same time. And then when the project's done to keep, to manage that content, it needs to be stored effectively on, uh, on something that can scale to the petabyte range, such as active scale, you know, you know your own cloud object storage, uh, perhaps tape, or, um, or object storage in the cloud. So, so beyond a file system, it tr Storenex really is a, a, a true platform. Now, many of you have probably very large Storenex installations, just rack, rows and rows um, of hardware. But today we're talking about 
this sort of this this really dramatic evolution of Stornex the file system. So um, in the past, to to deliver a shared storage file system, you would have needed several independent pieces of hardware to manage the file system. Um, you know, make sure that storage is is delivered to the users. Um, and, and then you would attach storage to that shared storage environment. So, you know, so as you can imagine, there are multiple independent connections and things that need to be configured to optimize and manage that environment. So it, it, it's a well-proven way of doing business because it can scale to enormous heights. But, the, but this next step of evolution for StoreX7 has been to take the services and the software that create and deliver that shared storage file system and virtualize them into virtual machines that can now be composed in a container architecture and deployed on other platforms, cloud. Um, uh, and uh, But today, this first instance is that we've taken these virtual machines, the file and data services that are Storenext, and the management of storage and are together now in one converged hardware system called the H4000. So together, Stornex 7 with its improvements um, um, and you know, this incredible new UI is truly a complete Stornex environment that fits in only two rack units. And since it's a virtual machine container, um, and, and everything's configured and very fast to orchestrate and deploy, you can truly get racked and running in minutes, um, which means you can stand up a creative shared environment very quickly. And then if you take that thought further, um, you, you realize that this lets you put this collaborative shared storage capability to enable your teams in, uh, in a lot more new places different to the actual data center. So, um, so, um, so the, the, the trams guys may, may, may jump in uh, periodically, but, but, but just to kind of recap, you know, I think one of, the, one of the first things this means is that if you've had a team somewhere that's been struggling with sending files back and forth or perhaps, you know, smaller NAS systems, well, you know, every one of these clients that, that are part of this team that have to finish a project are, are on different systems, they're on different file systems. And, uh, you know, if, if, if critical, say, camera cart files are ingested in one place, that's the only place they exist. And then they have to be shuttled around to different parts of the team. Very inefficient way to, to run a workflow. Um, but to me, it means that, that, that this system is not collaborative. It's got it, it's, it's got, um, you know, you're gated by how fast um, files can be sent between each person. Um, if it only exists in one place, it's very vulnerable to, um, to a disk failure in one place. So, um, so, so Stornex is a completely different proposition. And that is that rather than everyone having their own files and moving them back and forth, trying to use something like a Dropbox or, or something like that to send files around, no matter the platform, uh, with uh, Stornex 7 and an H4000 and very simple connections from the clients to that uh, the H4000 that can be high-speed Ethernet, um, that can be fiber channel if you have it in, in, in your environment. Um, and then by installing that client on each of those workstations, uh, and, and by the way, the Mac has this client software already built in. So you plug it into a Mac and it's already available. Every one of these team members now mount and share the storage presented by the H4000 directly on their system. And now the changes they each make um, are, are now visible to everyone, which just superpowers their workflows. Um, and, and critically, the, the solutions that run on top of them. So, um, you know, these solutions really like to have, and, and, and let's face it, file and folder uh, 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 naming is, uh, you know, is a way to make sense of these workflows. So, um, so solutions that run on top of that can link directly to one shared mount point. Um, so, so they work uh, even better. So uh, it, it truly is a real leap for teams that before had maybe been struggling with, you know, push-pull kinds of storage. And 
and and here again compared to before you ingest directly to something like the h4000 now everyone can see it the uh, the asset management system can immediately start going to work on it people can uh, every user can start tagging it so tremendous benefit um, uh, to this type of environment so um, let's talk about another deployment example and that is if you already have a store next environment so you probably know that that uh, one of the signs of how good business is and how many projects you're you're um, you're running for customers is that all your seats are full and, uh, and, and, you know, perhaps you have to go to like a second shift or something like that to, um, you know, to accommodate, you know, a, a new TV series or try to get something ready to deliver to one of the OTT providers. So this sort of finely tuned environment, um, you know, obviously it's well understood how to expand that environment, add more seats, run more infrastructure, but if you don't want to wait, and you have a new team available, you can use something like Stornex 7 and the H4000 to stand up a new team and they can independently go to work racked and running in minutes, whether they're a different department, uh, they could even be in a different city, uh, but they're immediately productive with their own very easy to stand up Stornex environment. And then probably to an anticipate uh, some of the questions are, is that um, the content they create there's a number of technologies you have um, that to, to move that content that's created in one place to synchronize it either back to the main environment um, um, using something like FlexSync or FlexTier. You can use CatDV that can branch both of these environments to physically move uh, content back and forth if and as needed. Um, and, and so there's a number of ways to make sure that your content library is always up to date um, and you just simply very quickly added more capability. So another, uh, now this is a really interesting one. Um, um, and, and this is where you, uh, if you think about this combination, a complete store next environment and something so small and, 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 and mobile, which means that you now have a way to stand up new collaborative capability for something that it, it, you know is not bound in a physical space you can like perhaps you want to go do a live event well having shipping one of these environments in um it means that you can now have everything you would or, or that you would do in your main facility live and on set so you can take a lot of pre-built packages you could now with a few editors on site create packages on the fly um, and, and so now you have a lot more capability um, um, out in the field. So, um, if, so one way to do this, and you know, another possibility is not just for live events or perhaps for like a seasonal sports production, um, you, know, you wanna film sports entertainment or your sports performance, something like that. Um, but, uh, but another rapidly evolving example is where you need more capability on location where you're shooting a production. So in this particular case, I would load up from my, from my home environment content that I'm going to need during a shoot. And now once it arrives on set and on location, then I now have a lot of new capability that's becoming really important nowadays. Um, you know, this new wave of on-set visual, uh, visual effects and, and, and um, um, the, these enormous video walls that, that just that have completely revolutionized how visual effects are created. Those enormous video walls are 12K video and that video needs to be fed and needs to be carried to set by, you know, by a device. And so this is a perfect way to do that. And, and, and also make sure that it's, um, you know, it's part of your shared storage environment and protected by the, uh, you know, by the RAID volumes uh, inside. Um, it's also a, 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 you know, rather than doing a, you know, rolling in a custom, uh, you know, ingest cart, well, that's another perfect uh, 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 task for, for Stornix 7 and the H4000, ingest directly to this. Um, and, uh, and now, since you have more of that capability, you can, from the location, do more review, maybe even kind of craft cuts, rough cuts, 
um, um, yeah, you just have more uh, choice and capability closer to where you're capturing content. So th this, this, this gives teams a lot more um, uh, ways to, um, uh, to work, um, all with a goal, of course, of, of delivering faster and more efficiently. And of course, um, if you are going to be on set or on location for a long time and you have an internet connection back, then you can, then you can start syncing content back. Uh, you can, again, use CatDB to sort of bridge these two environments and let your asset and project management teams access to it faster. Or of course, ship the device back and then do your ingest when you're back in the home environment. So um, that was um, um, you know, three um, uh, scenarios that, uh, that uh, the Quantum and the Trams team have been exploring and, and wanna explore with you. But the ultimate goal is just to help you consolidate a lot of your storage workflows, make them more efficient, um, you know, give you more capability at the edge, um, you know, and really um, uh, upend and, and sort of, you know, dramatically make more efficient the way you create and deliver content faster um, and, uh, and let you expand faster and adapt faster to new, new requests and, and new opportunities. So uh, that's, um, um, that is what's possible with um, um, the new Stornex 7 and the H4000. So I think Thanks. with that. Sorry, go on. Oh no, uh, thank you. I was going to say, Dan, what's um, um, I, I just um, you know, you know, our early take as we're exploring this with customers, it's um, I, I mean, um, I've been talking to some of the um, some of the professionals that you know that work with and evangelize these big video walls, and I mean, just just uh, it, it's it, it's just wild. This new sort of frontier of this, you know, having a um, enormous video wall that, you know, does away, you know, having to do with big virtual sets. I mean, you can change it in a snap and yeah. um, it's, I mean, there's a lot of technical challenges. That's still 12K video, <laughs> you know, that you have to deliver in pieces, but uh, it, it's, it's just an exciting time. Um, um, and, um, and, and, and we're having a lot of fun exploring this with you. No, I bet, you know, there, there's plenty of companies even with, with lockdown that have, that have obviously started you know, exploring this type of technology, you know, as and when the world starts spinning again, you know, you can go into central London and look at like the Adidas or the Nike stores, <laughs> the great big video wars that, that are obviously already absorbing technology like this. So, you know, I, I don't think this is going to be something that's a, a, you know, a one minute wonder. It's quite clearly going to be yeah. the standard moving forward, right? So, 